Hey, Sophia. So welcome to your natal chart reading. I'm just turning on the little timer here. Um, I had just started doing the reading like a few minutes in and I realized that I had your last name. I try, you know, these are all going on YouTube. All my readings, um, all pre-recorded readings go on YouTube now because I want to, you know, show anyone watching how I do my my charts. So maybe, uh, you know, people can learn about astrology or, or, you know, get, you know, you know, I, I loved seeing how the peace dealer, a different astrologer, um, I, I learned a lot from like his readings he did. So I want to do that as well. And then also, you know, um, if someone might see, uh, me do a reading and might want to get one of their own, that also, um, could be a possibility. So let's jump in. So I have your chart pulled up here. In whole science, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch back and forth between uh, present mode and um, that's why why it's so so cool to do it on Zoom. Um, so let's just move this over here. Okay. So okay. So first of all, let's just show your chart. So this is your birth chart. So basically, um, you have an ascendant in Taurus. Uh, moon in Gemini in the second house and a fifth house Virgo sun that is part of a stellium um, with a zero degree Virgo Venus, 27 degree Virgo Mars. After that, you have a conjunction between Pluto and Mercury in Libra and Jupiter over here in the 11th house in Pisces. So uh, fifth house stellium and Virgo, very interesting. So I'm not going to keep this up because I, throughout my readings, I, I have like different notes and I, and I have different things I go through, but I will, um, you know, throughout the reading, pop, pop it back up to kind of make sense of it. But, but as just, just to show you, this is your moon. This is your sun. So I don't know how much you know about astrology. Basically this birth diagram, this birth chart is essentially a photograph, a diagram of how the sky was at the moment of your birth right? From where you were. Melbourne, Australia, September 8th, 1974, uh, 2210. So basically, this is the moon. This is the sun. This is Venus, Mars, right? Mercury, Saturn, and on and on. And I'm basically breaking down what I see. So um, let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to stop the share. All right. Oh, where did it go? here. I literally feel like it's Mercury retrograde, but it's not. Okay. So starting off, um, the first thing I really like to talk about is what is the relationship between the sun and the moon? So I actually see quite a few people that have um, double Mercury rulership, meaning that your sun is in Mercury ruled Virgo and your moon is in Mercury ruled Gemini. So already off the bat, you know, Mercury has to do with the intellect. It has to do with communication, with thought, with cognition, right? It's also a very curious, you know, Mercury is very curious. It's, it's thirsty for knowledge. It's uh, flexible. So how these two relate? Well, basically they are three, um, not three. They're both mutable. So they're forming a square. Um, an elemental square, which means that they, the, the energies, the, the, the overall messages or energies of these, um, these two are at odds with each other, right? So the goal of, of, of um, Virgo is uh, at odds with the goal of Gemini. So let's get into that because we can really think of it as, you know, this is like the yin yang, right? And I feel like a lot of astrologers overlook this very simple. Like what I try to do is I try to simplify things, right? I really try to focus on what I think is the most important. So sun and Virgo, you know about your sun sign. We don't have to go so far into it. Basically Virgos are Virgos, you know? Um, I always, I always want to tell Virgo, you know, Virgo sun people, um, and you do have three other planets in it, that the big lesson a lot of times is, is around perfectionism, around this need you know, Virgo is a sign that has to do with purity. I think of it as like this, this white dove. I don't know. That's just the image that comes to my mind. And, um, you know, Virgo energy at its best 
um, understands. I mean, it's very, very focused on the routine, on, on getting things done, but it can be very, very anxious. It can also be very, very um, self-limiting in the sense that it can be its own worst enemy by um, a ton of, of self-criticism. So what can happen with the self-criticism is that it can actually be projected outwardly when the Virgo person hasn't dealt with their own internal um, issues around self-esteem and, and, and uh, you know, perfectionism in general. They can kind of be a buzzkill to be around sometimes. I'm not saying that's you at all because, you know, astrology, this is um, an interplay between free will and the chart. The chart, you know, I would present this chart the same to someone who is um, two years old or a baby. I do do baby charts. <laughs> um, or someone who's 70, 30, 20, whatever. It's just the, you know, it's the odds. It's the, 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 the hand you were dealt. So with Virgo, right? So, so um, it's so important to understand the 100 or, or zero perfectionism. A lot of people that have Virgo, they, hide, they, they hold themselves to such high, high ideals that are almost like impossible to get to. Um, and then when they inevitably don't get to them, they, they crash and they get really hard on themselves and they see, them, see themselves as less than. And the key, and I say this in so many readings, is to think of it everything on a spectrum, right? So say each day, 100 is your best, zero is your worst. Virgos sometimes think that they should be at 100 each day, right? And they create wonderful routines, um, you know, to, to, to make this happen um, and habits and, and health and things of that nature. But the key is to be able to look at your day, look at your life, look at your week, whatever, and understand that you're not always going to be at 100. And to be okay and to find, you know, in the meditation practice, we talk a lot, we talk a lot about self-compassion. To find that self-love and self-compassion for yourself, almost like you would be compassionate for, I have this scratch up my nose, sorry. Um, almost as you'd be so compassionate for a friend, right? Like for a best friend or for a cat, I don't know. Um, being able to have that same energy for yourself is so paramount for Virgos. To, so like if there's days where, you know, five out of 10 is the best you can do, just having a sense of humor, right? Borrowing from that opposite sign of Pisces, which is the most go, go with the flow energy, right? Another thing about Virgos, though, is that Virgo is a very hard to pin down sign. I know a lot of Virgos who don't really fit the typical stereotype of Virgo, right? Um, of that like overly structured. And I think I imagine that people that come to me who are Virgos, um, they might have a little bit of that, you know, kind of sometimes OCD, anxious energy, what I, what I was just, the perfectionist I was, just, I was just describing, but it's also a very spiritual sign. It's a sign that's very, very much about being of service. So a big part of you, and this, and this is when we bring in the house placement of your son, right? It's, it's in the fifth house, um, as I showed you before in the diagram. So in essence, that's the house of Leo. So when that's the case, Essentially, um, the individual with the fifth house son, a lot of their life is about being in touch with the inner child, right? It's about creativity, about having fun, fi finding pastimes that, that, that allow you to create. And just based on the general karma of how those two come together, it's um, trying, to, trying to get past being overly structured right? Overly structured in terms of, of how, you know, how you go about creating. So Virgo also is, is big time about service, right? And you have, you know, Pluto in the sixth house also, Mercury there, Chiron in the 12th house. So, um, you know, there's definitely, and I can actually keep this in present mode for now. I'm not really looking at anything. I'm just going off what I see. So, um, yeah, so Virgo basically is, is very service oriented and um, it, it just loves to, it loves to care for people. It's, 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 it's like a, it's almost kind of like cancer in the, in the sense that they're, they're like the, I would say like the two most motherly take care of you um, signs of the Zodiac, right? So 
besides that, the fact that's in this fifth house, right, that adds a lot of, of looseness, a lot of fun to it. And in essence, it's, it's, it's about figuring out ways to take the structure, right? Take this ability to have a very solid routine and put that into fun things that really make you feel like you're having fun, right? Um, so I would imagine that you would be someone who, with your midheaven and Aquarius also, who were your career, right? Because it's, it's also in the sixth house, um, the ruler of, of your midheaven is the sixth house, where your career is very inventive, where, where you where, and also like in, 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 in the, you know, there's, there's real, some, maybe not eccentric, but there's a real sense of individualism in your career. And you're really able to express yourself through what you do. That's like extremely important with this placement. Um, okay, so how does that, that Virgo have to do with this Gemini moon? Well, Gemini moon, so the moon represents, so there's the metaphor I always give of the egg, right? Um, the ascendant, which, you know, is Taurus, is the shell. The white is the sun. And the yolk is the moon. So, um the moon represents our emotions, right? Our real unconscious emotions, like the depths of ourselves. It represents what we're, what makes us happy, what we need to make happy, our internal environment, where we really live, right? So uh, under stress, people will tend to, you know, it's, it's like our instincts, right? So under stress, people will tend to go towards their moon sign. So moon in Gemini is, uh, it can actually be, so I, I would imagine just based off of what I see that, you know, you may have suffered, suffered or suffered from anxiety. I mean, uh, the signs of Gemini and, and um, Virgo are known for that. It's not necessarily, like I said, everything is, uh, is an interplay between free will and having a sip of this Coke. A rare delicacy I allow myself to have. Yum, yum, yum. Um, so yeah, it can be an anxious energy in the sense that, or the, the, the both of these, that they're mercurial. So it can be fidgety, uh, Gemini rules the hands. So you can really benefit a lot from finding um, pastimes like guitar or something. That's a great example. Um, or anything, piano, it doesn't have to be like that. Like even video games, like something that you're able to, to do to, with your hands with, use your hands with or for. Um, but moon and Gemini. Okay. So moon and Gemini people are very, very curious people, right? They are the ultimate social butterflies in the sense that they need to communicate with their immediate environment. Moon and Gemini people. So, so I think of like this butterfly, right? So this is when we, we, we talk about the square, which is like a, um, a friction, right? A 90 degree angle. Um, even though it's not exactly 90 degrees by element between Virgo and Gemini. Because on one end, there's this, the structure of Virgo, right? I need you think, you know, like, 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 I need you this and this, and this and this and this. Um, it's very, you know, Virgo is, is very interested in success and whatever it does. Um, they're here to get the job done. They're, you know, they're serious people, right? They're, and, you know, very multi-talented and all that. Well, Gemini also is very multi-talented, but it's a very, it's a way more, it's a less traditional energy than Virgo. And like I said, Virgo is kind of that wild card sign also. Like I see so many, cause it's the opposite sign of Pisces. So Vir I've seen so many Virgos in my practice and in my personal life who actually exhibit more Pisces energy than Virgo. It's crazy. And you do have Jupiter and Pisces, which we'll get into later. So note that, but overall the square here has to do between one of these being a masculine energy, Gemini and one, a feminine energy, Virgo. And, uh, the Gemini part of you wants to keep moving, wants to do this, wants to be a free spirit, wants to, to move on, right? Wants to, is, is curious about like trying so many different things throughout life. But then there's the Virgo part that's more structured, less willing to, how do you say, I guess, um, go with the flow, right? Even though it is a mutable sign, it still is, you know, Virgo. We know how Virgos are. So that is a big part right there. Um, more about the Gemini moon is that 
it gives an emotional need. So people with Gemini moons sometimes can be people who get like an emotional kick out of small talk. So it's not to say you're not a deep person. No, not at all. But they really like to, like I said, communicate with their friend with their friends and and they get a lot out of just being in their immediate environment, right? And and having having conversations and and uh, they they like to talk. Right. And I don't mean that in a bad way. They just like to. So um, that's that's a huge need. Gemini also has to do with writing and it also has to do with siblings. Right. Or the third house is siblings. Um, but yeah, it, it maybe maybe less the third house is more siblings. I guess Gemini would be would be more more of, a, of like that early um, environment, early school environment, early also has to do with neighbors. Right. So. There's a real need for you wherever you live to kind of like be comfortable in like walking around town, meeting this person, meeting that person. It's very social energy. So that can get in the way of the Virgo because the Virgo is like, you know, I want to wake up at this time and then do this and then do that and then do that and then do that and then that and that. And, that. and then like with that whole perfectionism thing, the Gemini moon might get in the way of that, Right. Um, so it's about really balancing these two out and fi figuring out a way where they can coexist. Well, the thing is that they're both, um, ruled by, um, Mercury. So that's going to make, you know, most likely a, you, you know, a very intelligent person, someone who's very, who, but also someone who's very in your head. So that's the thing here is that how can you become embodied, right? How can you, um, not, let's say overanalyze or ruminate over different situations. Cause that's definitely something that can happen um, with these placements. So practices like meditation, yoga, you know, walking in nature, anything that gets you out of your thoughts and into your body and that, and the, you know, the creative process, whatever that is for you are massive. Right. So um, that's one thing I'm going to go off share mode for a second um i have another sip of coke so um yeah so lots of mental stimulation is needed with gemini moon so when it has to do with relationships they're not going to be down to be with boring people right they're going to want something that and you know, even though you you know we'll go into love after but um you know, they, they really are going to want the fun. They're, they're curious. Um, they're, they're seeking answers to many questions. And um, yeah, sometimes people with, with Moon and, and Gemini also, when, when they are young, they're called upon by their mom to provide lots of stimulation and, and activity, right? So yeah, and then the Moon's in the second house. So, um, you know, that suggests... So second house is about external possessions and internal values and kind of like, a, yeah, it, can, it has to do with like the external and the internal, what we possess, right? So some people with second house moons have a real emotional, uh, they, there's a real need for um, financial security, right? Um so um, they seek emotional security through accruing possessions, um, but it can be very frustrating at times because um, because the moon is, is so up and down, there can be a, a real uh, up and down in terms of, of, of like, let's say income and, and, and just money and, and all that in general, right? It fluctuates. So there can be times where there's lots of, you know, economic insecurity and then times where, you know, the opposite happens. So um, the key here is to develop internal resources where you're not basing yourself off of your possessions, off of what you make, off of your place in society, right? Which sometimes Virgos can do a little bit, right? Because it is an earth sign. It is very you know, concerned um, with the material world. So by going within... And really finding out which your you know your north node is in the eighth house, which is the house of of, of really that process of going in right of, of death, rebirth, and transformation. Um, 
So by, by going through that process, which in another interesting part is that your um, south node is, is, in the, is in Gemini also. South node represents who you were in a past life, your past life tendency. So to have it ruled by Mercury, which is in the sixth house in, um, blah, 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 in Libra, it's suggesting that you know you you've brought in you you're a very diplomatic person who knows how to communicate who has this very and Pluto's conjuncted so this real intensity to your communications this real intensity to your ability to 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 for example let's say like research or like or like win people over with a very dynamic way of speaking a very deep and intense way of speaking and it goes for for the way like if you if you get interested in something you go in. But the fact that it's in Libra, the Mercury, it makes you speak in this very Venusian and sweet way. So you can kind of like almost really, I don't want to say win people over because that sounds manipulative, but get your point across in a very good way. So, all right. <clears throat> um, Let's see. So, okay. So then I'll look at the aspects of those, but so then you have the ascendant in Taurus. So Taurus is making your chart ruled by Venus, right? Because whatever, um, whatever is the ruling planet of the um, ascendant is the ruling planet of the chart. So your Venus is in Virgo, which is, um, could be a difficult Venus placement. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but basically Taurus rising people, they tend to approach life in, you know, a pretty methodical manner. They're very reliable. It's also, you know, it's very good for, for beauty. It's very good for, for, for attracting um, things to you. It's, you know, the, it's, um, it's very much through the, the senses. Um, you know, Taurus rising people, they, they, they can be, they can be a bit slow to decisions. They're not going to be the person that's very, that just like jumps in and like, and, and makes decisions right away. They like to kind of ease their way into the situations. But very, very reliable energy. And um, yeah. So it also is forming a, uh, a trine with your um, ruling planet Venus and with your um, sun, elemental trine. So essentially that's saying that the Virgo part of you and the ascendant work really, really well together. Um, it's just that Gemini part that's a little bit at odds, right? So aside from that, what else can I say about Taurus rising people? Um, you know, they, they, a lot of them like to eat. <laughs> a lot of them like to... Uh, you know, really just enjoy, enjoy the nicer things in life. Right. Um, they have a very friendly persona or I guess, you know, outer character personality, very warm. Um, they like to take care of people. So, so I definitely see that as a theme in your life. It's, it's very domestic sign. Um, so yeah. 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 Um, what else can I say? Yeah, so sometimes they can they can rely on other people to take the initiative, and it's a fixed sign. So Taurus fixed Earth means that, uh, in, in let's do you have any fire? So you, you don't really have any fire. You don't have any fire in your chart, so it may be kind of hard for you to like self start, but you definitely have the energy of once you do start something. And you know Virgo is is very like to do list types. But once you do start something, you're really able to follow through, right? So structure, it, it can make one yeah, very self, self-reliant, independent. So it's like it's all about like figuring out how to start that thing, right? Um, but another thing about Taurus rising is security, right? So um it goes back to the second house moon as well, where people with Taurus rising aren't the biggest risk takers, right? They, um, the, you know, the thing with the stubbornness of the Taurus, right? Where like everything is so good. Everything is so chill that why do they need to risk make, you know, let, like making things worse or like risk, risk something that might make their life better 
um, but might, you know, have them lose what they have or what they've always had. So it's, it's about taking risks, which is also, you know, um, with your north node in the eighth house. So, yeah, but one thing I really like about Taurus rising is that they're not hurried. They're not people who are, who are hurried. Um, and they really like to feel comfortable and um, they're very in touch with their body somatically. So you can like gain a lot of clues um, through your body's reactions to situations, right? And um, like I said before, like one of the great things is that like, you know, once they do become locked into whatever it is, whatever their purpose is, whatever they really feel like they want to do, they stay locked in. It's such a great thing. And like not pe many people like myself included, like, you know, it's a struggle, you know, um, to, to really do that, to really like, like, I always think of it like, like the, like the earth energy is like, uh, especially Capricorn, but like, you know, you also Virgo and Taurus. It's like, it's like building the foundations so that you can then build a skyscraper, right? And the foundation of the building always takes a lot of time to build. But um, yeah, so they're okay for things to take longer. And it's just like the slow and steady growth. Um, so yeah. So now I'm looking at aspects to your, important aspects to your sun, your moon. Aspects are the important angular relationships. So just how I told you how your sun and your moon were, were uh, 90 degrees or like in, in a square angle, not exactly 90 degrees, but there's an, what we call an orb, which means it doesn't have to be exact, exact, and it's different and different astrologers use different orbs. But basically, um, yeah, I'm looking to see like what, what, I, what I can see that's important. And um, okay, so right off the bat, I see moon opposite Neptune. And moon square um, Venus, sun opposite Jupiter. So um, square the, the node. So yeah, so so okay. First of all, moon trine um, Mercury with very very close. That's an energy where your emotions and your communication are very intertwined. And you have a real way of expressing your deepest emotions that gets through to people in a way that is very positive. Um, then, you know, you also have Venus. Um, so you, you have your Venus, which you haven't gone over yet, right? It's actually squaring your moon. So this is actually a very similar energy to what I talked about with um, the different, like um, the, the the Virgo Gemini square with your sun and your moon, right? Um, but there is some nuance to it. But in essence, Venus is really about you know people always call Venus like the love planet, which it is. But in essence, um, Venus is really about how we love ourselves because we can only love someone else as much as we love ourselves, right? So. Um, in essence, Venus squaring the moon means that there's so Venus is also what we value, right? So um, it can kind of make it a struggle for you to satisfy your need for love, affection. Um, and basically, your emotional well being can really depend on the loyal and regular. Um, nourishment you get from loved ones, emotional nourishment. Um, and you can sometimes measure your own success in life um, by your intimate relationships. And, um, you know, it, 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 can, it can be, you know, I've seen it be sometimes like a kind of code, it can be a codependent energy, um, a real quest for pleasure. Um, that's not that one. So, um, hmm.
in in terms of love and relationships, it can make one sometimes like an overreactor. Um, and yeah, where, where there can where the emotions there, there can be like this real feeling of like the, of power where you can fear losing um, control over them in relationships, right? So yeah, it, it just creates issues between the emotional needs that Gemini moon and kind of your love nature, right? Um, the love nature in Venus, which, which th that's what makes this one, explain this one a little bit difficult at this point because we haven't really gone into Venus and Virgo. But basically, um, you know, it's two energies that are at odds with each other, right? The Venus and Virgo, it wants to be, it wants to, the sort of love in a structured way um, and then the Gemini moon, it wants to just really, really go, go with the flow, right? Uh, Venus Virgo love language is really shown by, um, what I like love language is like what I, you know, what I do for the other person. That's a lot of times what Virgo Venus is. Um, so yeah. And, and also, you know, Venus, Venus and Virgo is very, um, it's very fixed on like, on have it it, it, it it gives somewhat of a serious approach to relationships and um you know gemini moon is like very not serious it's very like fun curious like you know let's 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 try different things so like while the virgo venus might you know want to want to really build something solid that's committed that that um moon in in gemini part might just really be like come on let's try something new let's try something fun this isn't fun anymore so it's like these two conflicting parts so gemini versus virgo and that's something you could study even further um, i'm sure there's videos and in, in articles of like just the square the square between virgo and gemini um you can even search something like gemini or sun and virgo moon and gemini it's, it, entire articles and, and videos where you can learn more about like what those two energies, how they interact. Right. So next, oh, one second. So there's the opposition. That was the big one. So that was the, the big, big aspect was um, moon opposite Neptune. And before I go into that, you also have a trine with Mars and trying with Pluto. So that's going to give you, you know, some action to your emotions, right? Some ability to really follow through with, with what you deem emotionally valuable. And then with Pluto, kind of same thing, some, some real dynamism and intensity in your emotions um, where you're able to go through like successful death, rebirths and transformations. Um, but I don't want to go too far into those because I really want to focus on the moon opposite Neptune. So, moon, so Neptune is what rules um, the fog and confusion, right? It's also the highest spiritual energy. So essentially, when the moon is opposite ne Neptune, it, it can cause a lot of misunderstandings. There's, so there's, they're, they're in, in almost like paranoia. So it can have a really uh, difficult impact on relationships. Um, it gets such a powerful imagination. So like there's, there's like the highest, higher part of it where it just gets such a great intuition and great imagination. But at times the perception can be clouded by illusions um, of what you think is actually happening. And a lot of times it's not. So that's where like meditation and like, and becoming like really, really clear, getting out of your mind, right? This can like, like with the whole rumination thing I talked about um, of, of overanalyzing all that. It can be really, really valuable to um, you know, find practices that can get you out of that. Um, so besides that, you, um, you know, it, it, yeah, I mean, it, it just, it, like I said, it just, it just creates difficulty in these, uh, you know, in these relationships where you can feel like you're, you're being deceived. Um, moon representing the emotions. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just, it's, it's a tough one for, for those reasons, just because it can really cause kind of like confusion, emotional confusion. And also it has to do with like, oh, like it can, it can also be like over empathy, right? Where, um, you might really, really take on, um, someone else's energy. So it's super important for you to be 
around people, you know, with good energy, obviously, you know, same for everyone, but, um, yeah, like you, know, you really have to watch out for like the energy vampires and in love, um, it, you know, with having a Gemini moon, that's so, that's so curious already. Just like watching out for being curious and like the shiny, you know, the, the gold and shiny that's actually fake, you know, who's gold, right? Um, so a lot of times people with this, you know, they, they look for solutions to their problems in the outer world and it can come in the form of dependency on others, right? Or um, like misidentifying with the wrong people, right? Um, so it's all about, this is like a very karmic aspect of like going within and, and, and kind of, the, and the, you know, this theme that keeps popping up in your chart of finding that, that, that strength in that, in, in that everything, the external, the internal resources, as opposed to external resources. Right. Um, cause yeah, that can really be like an over-imagination, but anything, you know, any of these aspects, right oppositions and squares, which some, some people say, oh, they're bad, they're bad. No, they can become superpowers, right? It's just like the metaphor of like the athlete who let's say has really weak arms, um, but then he works out his arms really, really like intensely because he knows it's a, it's a point of weakness and then he has the strongest arms. It's just a weird example, but like, it's kind of like that, right? Because, um, and then there can be someone with like all the trines and the sextiles, the easier ones, and they might just be like, have the naturally strong arms and they might get complacent and be like, you know what? I don't have to work out. I'm good. And then, you know, they get caught up with. So, yeah. Um, besides that, yeah, you, got, you, you, you can feel trapped within your own lifestyle. So you, it's really important to, 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 to become free. And yeah, just like tuning into the highest energy of Neptune, which is that high compassion, being of service, spirituality. That's, you know, that's going to really, like, being of service is really going to help you with that. Okay, I can share again. Um, so that is uh, this Neptune. Where is Neptune? Up here, opposite here, as you can see, the moon opposite Neptune. So next, so talking about love. Um, so Venus in Virgo, right? So Venus in Virgo, people, it's in the fifth house. So Venus in Virgo is, you know, it's really an energy where, you know, and I've been with, I've, I've dated people with Venus in Virgo, of course, it's in the 12th house. And you have to watch out for what I was saying before of projecting your insecurities and your perfectionism um, and being too critical, right? Because like Virgo can be like really, really overly critical. And uh, it's important for, you know, in love to like, like to really understand your own value and to not push that criticism um, to the other person because, you know, they might not deserve it at all. Um, besides that, you know, Venus and Virgo, it, it, can, it can make someone, you know, really, really think a lot about, about love right? Um, there can, you know, Venus being the Mercury sign, they can just have almost like a, I don't know how to say it, like a cognitive approach to love in a sense. But really, you know, they want a partner that they can, they can rely on, right? They want a partner that they can really rely on and that they know is going to be there day after day, right? So it's like, it's like uh, relationships with a practical basis that are meaningful. And um, they'll want someone that, yeah, who's like a, kind of like a precise person. And like, like I said, you may also like really expect perfection. Um, and uh, that's, that's the big, the big thing that I've seen lots of, um, you know, Venus Virgos kind of lose in that way is you know, I'll give this, I'll give this little story from my own life. I was dating a girl with Venus Virgo. She had in the 12th house. We went on a hike once, a beautiful hike. And she went on to tell me four or five things in a row, like psychological things. That, you know, I didn't ask her at all. Just five things that were wrong with me. Just like, like, we weren't even like, you know, we were only together for like a, a week or like two weeks. And she starts just like five in a row. 
you know so it's just like that's like the lowest energy of of the of the of the venus virgo it's like where you're so where, where you're almost like looking for the bad right um i i, I call it flow killing and uh, low earth energy in general capricorn taurus or more capricorn and virgo um is flow killing at its worst it's where you like just looking too much and this goes to mars and virgo especially which we'll talk about next but yeah so venus in the fifth house um you know that's a beautiful placement for for being able to express yourself um creatively um it's great for children as well you know and, and this also like this everything we're seeing in the chart can indicate that children play a huge role in your life um but you know, you, you you may be very precise in your creations. So I think a very important thing for you, like you know, is making your work or making your your hobbies, making things that you love to do for fun, your work. I think that is it's huge. And I imagine that there might be some like humanitarian pull to it because of the the midheaven being there. So. With um, that said, what else could I say in seconds? Yeah, so I think that's that's yeah, kind of the, the wrap on Venus and Virgo. So Mars and Virgo. So Mars and Virgo, they are so observant, right? Um, they are literally like the people who notice everything physically, right? They they notice like if someone's you know like like gained or lost weight or if they you know worn a different color, you know if it, it like 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 little little physical things, right? They know they notice it all. So. What I've noticed a lot when I say flow killer, this is the low energy of Mars Virgo, is just that that exact word flow killer, right? Um, like they're very very goal oriented, super practical, um, and they tend to do a lot like many things at, at any given time. That also is like kind of a Gemini Moon thing where they're just like there's just like so many different things going on, um, but they can get really annoyed, right? When they find something, and this is, like I said, like Virgo, everything ties back to how you've dealt with your internal perfectionism. Um, but they can get really like, like you're doing this wrong, like, like critical of other people because Mars is like the action. It's like this service function, right? So when it's in Virgo, it can it's very, it can be very very like overly critical of other and self. Um, yeah, so they, so so someone that's Mars and Virgo that's annoyed can be very difficult to be around. Um, you know, they can be very protective about their system for getting things done, and yeah, just very particular with with also the kind of people that they're they're willing to kind of do business or or work with or or do anything with, right? Um, what else can I say? It's a very nervous energy that I've noticed too. Very nervous energy. Um, yeah, they just like, 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 like I said, and I'll say it again and again, like I, I've seen so many Mars and Virgos, more men than women, um, who just like figure out something wrong with a situation where we're, we're like, um, you know, the mutable energy likes to kind of just go with the flow. And then the Mars and Virgo will just like fi find something to kind of break the flow. So it's all about just like kind of tuning into that, that, that energy, that opposite, that Pisces energy, right? That dreamy, trusting God, trusting the universe type energy, right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's extremely perfectionist. And in terms of sexuality, it can all, there can almost be yeah like almost like a structure to the sexuality right um it's almost like their performance in bed can be similar to their work sometimes and um they really but they also they really again this goes like with a virgo and love they want it they really want to be good at what they do right so um they're super like loyal 
and super willing to please their partners and go the extra mile. And that's like something I love about Virgo energy is that they're so loyal and so dependable. And it's like, you know how some people, they just kind of like, like they talk the talk, they promise the world. Like, I don't know if you've seen the the Tinder swindler on Netflix. (laughs) Virgo is like, they're soft-spoken, it's humble energy. And um, they do the things when no one's looking, you know? They do the good things when no one's looking. Honestly, not every Virgo is like an angel, but, um, you know, at its highest energy, they, they're, you know, they're, they're trying to give back and they're pushing that energy into being a service and, and doing nice deeds for humanity. So also Mars and Virgos in the fifth house is meaning that a lot of your energy, overall energy is being pushed into creativity, right? Um, so, when I say creativity, I mean authentic self-expression, right? Which is the idea that you're not creating something just to have it be seen by other people. You're not creating something just to have it be, you know, to get a certain amount of views, right? You're creating something for the sake of understanding yourself better on a deeper level. One quick second. Let me grab it. So, okay, so that's kind of what I'm seeing right now. Um, And there's more, don't worry, there's more. Um, Let's see the aspects here. Okay. So, okay, Mercury is um, conjunct Pluto. So that's just like the best for like, you'd probably be an amazing researcher. Like when your mind gets set on something, you just have this explosive, like volcanic, just like, boom, like you're able to just go so in on whatever that is. Right. Um, and it makes you a really, really good worker. Like you're super good. At, like, I don't want to say you're just, you're an employee. Cause you could totally be like an entrepreneur also, but you're able to like, just like with your daily tasks, like there's just like, and that's not just because you're a Virgo. Virgo rules that too, but you're able to just go in, right? Um, and you have what I have, six house Uranus, interesting. Um, and that creates like a very like, so even though you are a Virgo, which which tend to kind of have their like, their their day by day be set, wake up at seven, do the 7.30. The Uranus in the sixth house typically has a very eccentric, like for me, it's, 4 43 a.m. right now i just drink a coca-cola and like whatever you know like so it's, it's kind of having like a unusual approach to daily life right um and uh, maybe like an unusual routine but with virgo you get it done somehow you get it done it might not be um you know like how everyone else is but you get it done and yeah so anyways we'll, go, we'll come back to that one um so then also aspects with the, um, let's see here. So, okay, we talked about this one with, with the Venus. In one quick second, actually, let me see one, second, one thing. Yeah, I had to take a quick little bathroom break, but um, okay, so back to where we were. Um, so yeah, basically like, Love is going to be completely related to your own self-esteem, right? To your own, to how, like how, how much you're able to get past all these things within yourself. That's literally, I can't say any, any differently. Right. Um, and when you do, you know, and if you are at that level as, as one of these kind of high vibe Virgo, Virgos, which I imagine you are, um, you know, you're really looking for someone reliable. You're not looking for someone who's just here one day and gone the next. Because on one end, as a Gemini moon, you do seek that and need that excitement, right? Um, but then you're also wanting that stability, wanting that person who understands that Virgo ness in you, right? Because some people they just don't get Virgos. You know, they're like, why do you have to be so structured? Why do you have to, you know, make lists like this? Why, like, why, why do these little things matter? But that's how the Virgos are, and there's a method to their madness because they get shit done. They care. Like, for example, my mom's a Virgo. And the amount of time she saved our, like me and my brothers, asses by things that we were like, mom, why do you have to do this? Like, come on. You know, she just, just like that research and just, 
and and just like like you could say you could call it like worrying a lot but like it's sometimes rightfully so like precautions for example like going on vacations um and like really like like when you're going to different countries like really looking up like and learning all about like what's going on there like what might be risks um stuff like that so yeah um let's go see Virgo Mars yeah they just they just um super observant it's like it's like exactly the kind of person I would want to I, I would want on my like financial team you know because I would want them to be like observing all little things and making like you know like the like it's very very analytical but um in relationships yeah God got to watch out to not be taking your own shit and just like like, because you, you might see all the imperfections with the other person, the Venus of Virgo will, the Mars of Virgo is going to start, you know, potentially it's not Mercury, but it, it's going to, it's going to start talking. It's going to go there. It's going to start talking about them. So a huge thing in your chart is how can you take this Virgo energy, which can be Gemini's energy and put it into something creative. And um, yeah. So Let's see here. So we talked about that. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talked about that. Okay, so that's pretty much all of those. Um, so, yeah, clearly you have you, know, you have you have a lot of Earth energy, so you have to watch out for stagnancy. Watch watch out for um, you know not taking risks and for you know, it's very, very good for stability for, for that, that ability to kind of like um, have like natural groundedness and wake up the at today and feel like the same person. Um, but, you know, risk taking can be difficult. Um, so, you know, so, sometimes people that have a lot of earth, I, I'm not gonna say it boring because that's, that's not, that's not how it is. Just like uh, unwilling to kind of go outside the box and try something that might be a little bit risky, but maybe fun, you know? But that's why you have this fifth house um, Virgo energy because that's the house of Leo. So that's going to add some kind of Leo energy to you in a sense, right? So, um, you know, when you lack fire, it's important to try to figure out ways that you can motivate yourself, right? Figure out ways that you can push yourself to self-start. And that's your North Node. It's in a fire sign, right? The North Node is like, in past lives, the mountain that you haven't climbed per se, right? Um, the desk, it's almost like a lot linked to destiny. It's in Sagittarius. So we'll get, get into that in a little bit. So next Jupiter. So Jupiter, so we've done the inner plan. So what we've done so far is like, it's kind of like your, like those all have conscious parts of, their, of your personality that they rule, right? Um, Jupiter, on the other hand, is a kind of like a middle planet. So it's in Pisces. Um, in the 11th house. And what that basically means is that it gives you, so Jupiter Pisces are like on this very intuitive search for truth. They're the people that really care about the underdog. They're extremely empathetic and compassionate, creative people, super spiritual. They can be like religious, spiritual teachers, right? And because it's in the 11th house, that could actually be the case. The 11th house is the group, the association. So, you're, you know, with Pisces and Neptune ruling your 11th house, you know, you'll, you'd be someone who, um, you know, that, that's very, like, popular. Like, that's the energy of someone who's very, very popular, who makes friends easily, who has luck, abundance, and um, optimism when it comes to friends. You know, you, you know um, so very, very lucky in that area of life. But um, there, there, there should be this, like, this energy to the friendships that's really based on compassion, helping the world, um, and love and unity, right? So, you know, joining groups, um, joining organizations, having friend, like friend circles where there's a certain level of trust, a certain level of maybe, maybe like something related to like art and creativity. So those are all very, very important. So also back with the love, you have Jupiter conjunct Juno. And Juno is the, you know, and then Black and Lilith start too. So that's the, your 11th house has those in it. So Juno is like kind of like the marriage part of our chart, right? So um, Juno in, in Pisces means that you really seek a spiritual relationship, right? 
you seek a relationship that, um, you know, can really help you like, like grow and transform. And that's a union that had, that's based on spiritual values. Right. And, 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 um, yeah. So really like being at one with the world through your relationships where you, you deepen your spirituality through them, maybe like doing like retreats and things like that together. And it also makes you very, very romantic and having romantic ideals with, you know, in regards to your relationships. But one like this can be a little bit disillusioned when it comes to relationships. And I already said that with the, the opposite moon and Neptune. So you got to watch out for that. And um, also in the 11th house, it's like friendships will, you know, play an important role in all this. And one quick, quick second. Okay. Okay. Keep having technical difficulties. Freaking non-Mercury retrograde. But anyways, okay. So as I was saying, so um, the 11th house is packed. Um, so you, that that's a very good place in Jupiter and Juno together. That, that can bring a lot of luck. And you might actually meet your lover like when you're joining like a, like some type of group, some type of, of spiritual group per se, right? Or maybe it's it's through like a like a friend group, something you, you'll really like uh, want to have like a common interest with them. Um, so then Black Moon Lilith, uh, it's also in 11th house in Pisces. I always think of Black Moon Lilith um, as sort of like the shadow energy. It's not an actual planet. It's, it's more of the shadow um, energy that if you let it go, um, kind of like it's like if, if you let your if you let yourself go at your worst lowest vibe that's what like comes out and you have it like i said in pisces in the 11th house when i think of pisces black and Lilith, i think of self-victimization escapism right um feeling bad for yourself right um and just some of the lower energies of pisces not wanting to deal with reality uh, I don't imagine that, that the laziness part would come in with, with someone with so much Virgo in their chart. But yeah, I, I would definitely think of like escapism. Um, you know, some, some, sometimes it can be like over um, substances or, or things like that. And it can also come down to um, manipulation, like emotional manipulation, like part of that whole victimizing thing, right? Um, so... Yeah, you gotta you gotta watch out for that, and um, also just like reacting too much through your feelings rather than applying a reason. But I don't really see that being an issue, being that you have the you know so much Mercury energy. So I have an article somewhere here that breaks it down each one to fear. It's very really really quick. Um, so the fear associated with with Pisces is fear of vulnerability, um, and I'm reading. Fear of being hurt that leads to emotional walls, obvious or subtle. On the other end of the spectrum, they can trust way too fast, which leads to a pain that reinforces the belief they need to protect themselves. Healing comes from relying on intuition and gut feeling to decide who to trust and accept that potential pain is a part of the equation. So a little more information there. So also Jupiter 11th house is really good, like, like for money too. Um, and just like, like I'm talking like wealth money, not like income money. And yeah, it just, it just makes one very popular with like this ever widening circle of friends. And uh, what else can I say about that? Yeah, so they can, they, they can really like, uh, like uh, it, just, it just really works well for friendships and for, for joining for different groups. Like, um, Move, like for example you could be someone who like moves to different countries and then you just get lucky somehow you just you know in or different cities you just like have this like good group of friends in each place you go so yeah and it's like a mega healing energy there with with the jupiter so um you know mid heaven and 10th house in in um aquarius you know that that's more about career energy 
and it's uh you know uranus in the sixth house so basically that yeah that, that, that says that you know, you'll you'll be someone who really wants to serve it's in libra um so i i could see like counseling being something but but it's and it's it's not like like you like that's like the only one but that's something that's you know something where you're you're of service and uh, maybe even something in health because virgo is like like a doctor or something virgos can be very much uh you know like my mom for example virgo she's a chinese um doctor and an acupuncturist and um they really have the ability to kind of like get through the nitty gritty right if it's like a long school process or something like that so yeah also with the midheaven and aquarius you know you're, you're gonna want to you you'll probably there's like some inventive energy so like in, ingenious energy like a maybe a, a more unconventional career path and you'll really want to make a con contribution to humanity and also um because it ruled, it's ruled by uranus you might have lots of career changes you might even have be someone who like has um different careers like maybe like the hobby right because virgo is so dynamic in terms of how much it can do there might be like the uh like the hobby the the pat the pa slash passion and then like the job that really pays the bills and then eventually trying to like convert um you know whatever that creative with all that fifth house energy right whatever that creative um um whatever your version of creativity creative outlet is into something that can be monetized which you know with all the virgo it's highly possible so okay um so saturn in the third house um that that can bring karmic issues with siblings um also it makes um you know a lot of people with third house saturn's they um they may have had like like their early childhood like received like a message that like their way of thinking or, or speaking communication ability you know wasn't the best or wasn't good or or something like that right um where they, where they they had they may have like thought like like become very shy early in childhood um fear of expressing themselves like root uh, throat chakra type energy right um but it's like through like your very hard efforts, right? And it's usually around the, the, the sad return around 29 and a half, 30 years old, um, that you gradually build up the skill in speaking your truth, speaking, um, you know, speaking, speaking out, right? It's in, it's in cancer. So this could actually cancer that, you know, um, um, you know, have to do with, with the family, right? Where you may feel isolated within your own family um, and maybe take your family responsibilities very, very seriously and have like some, some very interesting uh, family karma that kind of makes it difficult for you to fully express yourself. Um, so then you're part of fortune, which is not a planet. It's, it's, it's a Arabic point. It's basically like where you can find your greatest joy. It's a very lucky part of the chart. It's in Leo in the fourth house. So that's basically saying that um, your greatest joy, and it can come from being in touch with your inner self. Um, and um, there's a real need, yeah, a real need to like really, yeah, really be in touch with your inner self. And in Leo, it's once again saying great fulfillment can come through, um, you know, getting in touch with that, that, that creative nature, that creative outlet, right? Um, and yeah, just like really, really like shine, like, like, like shining in whatever area of life that you want to shine in. And also fourth house is family. So you can get a lot of joy out of like, out of shining in your family in some way, right? Maybe it's like kind of overcoming that Saturn barrier. So, you know, after that, we talked about the fifth house. So sixth house, um, you know, Uranus, I talked about that, like unusual uh, habits, unusual um, routine. Um, you know, it's also the, the the house of health and it's ruled by Libra. So that, 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 that can be quite, quite good but there is pluto and uranus there so pluto and mercury also so pluto there um it can so so just from a from a um so pluto is like this dynamic energy right it's like it's it's it's, it's not it's a little it's, it's a little bit like the north node it's like where you can like you have to like go into your shadow 
to find whatever Pluto is. Like it's like the, that that archetypal dig through the underworld, and you find all the gold, right? So, um, yeah. So so daily routine is super important to you. Like how you treat yourself, your health is like has like a spiritual like there's a, a spiritual value to it, right? Um, there can also be like dramatic changes to your health, and the challenge is to really recognize the the relationship between mind and body. That's how it's super, super important. Right. Um, and I have my Pluto book that I, it's kind of like a, a tradition that I do here. Um, it's like just like little notes I took like a long time ago and I like to kind of go over those in meetings. So let's find six as Pluto. Okay, so here we see a transition point of sharp contrast to the creative power of the subjective self shown in Leo. The need arises to return to level ground, now. to level ground, and this is from like an evolutionary standpoint, right, from past life to past life. The need arises to return to level ground and to reevaluate the self through fundamental reexamination. This placement seeks a um, reassessment of self. Uh, drive to continuously authenticate itself and instead seeks to de deconstruct the self to place it at the service of others. It's all about service, right? Um, so service of others or useful work. In this way, a profound humility is sought as the ego bows to larger forces to, and to a proper assessment of self and the environment. So this is all done so that the will can accept the other, put on the seventh, and not be so self-centered the question goes from how can i be special to how can i be useful so once again it makes you know it really really highlights this energy of um of being of service to humanity right and and how important that is and uh, also like the whole health thing that i explained before too so uranus there and you know, we talked about it a little bit um so it's, it's going to make you like very rebellious also like like in a career where you, where, you, where you might have a boss it might be difficult for you um so you'll want to have a lot of, of freedom in your workspace in your career right um so the attitude if you do serve others your attitude towards work might be very rebellious and um, you might find some like jobs like some like feeling kind of like imprisonment, right? Which you really want to escape from. Um, and it can bring unexpected diseases too, and are usually connected to the nervous system or mental health. And it's like there can be lots of as, as a Virgo, there can be like this workaholic and energy. So there can be lots of stress that comes from excessive hard work, which then manifests as nervous breakdowns or other like psychosomatic. So I keep saying psychosomatic. So it's all about recognizing the body, right? Getting with that, with, with that Taurus rising. And um, yeah, so like, it's really careful to like important, excuse me, um, important to, to examine your body, which Virgos are so good at doing, like, like, you know, go see doctors, um, just like get, get checkups frequently. Um, because like Uranus is like that quick energy, right? Like a Saturn, if you had Saturn here, it would be more chronic, chronic and slow. Uranus is quick. I'm not scaring you. I'm not saying it's, it's bad because as a Virgo, that is the sign of health, right? Virgos, like, like they're the best at, at, at understanding what it takes, you know, what, what goes good in their body. And um, so it, it's really following that high part of Virgo, right? And the most important thing is just like to concentrate on living a carefree life, right? Because it's really the worries and all of the, the psychosomatic, like in your, so when I talked earlier in the stream about being like, oh, like overly analytical in your head, that's like really what, like where, where diseases can come from when you have Uranus in the six, right? So that's super, super important. Um, and the best way to have the highest energy of this is through altruism and acts of service. Um, like when you're like, for example, let's say volunteering or just doing anything of that, of that case, of that, like of that, of that, uh, type, um, you know, like when you're offering yourself 
for like, you know, like, like for, without expecting anything in return. Um, a lot of the negative traits that Uranus could, could, could bring are diminished. So it's, it's very good for, for health to like be of service. And we see this in many parts of your chart. Um, okay. So then seventh house, you know, ruled by Scorpio. So, you know, that's Mars, Mars and Virgo. So, you know, there's going to be a real link between your relationships and like this, uh, and you know, this need, like, like really, once again, once again, really need to watch out for, for that perfectionism. But then, you know, the fact that it's in Scorpio, there's a lot of intensity in the relationships, right? So um, you need to aim for positive growth and that real snake shedding the skin energy in your relationships. So it can also be another indicator of spiritual relationships, right? Um, so yeah, and there can also be like drama and whatnot in, in, in relationships. And no plants in the seventh house, but we talked about um, a lot of the other energies there. So then um, eighth house, you have you have a uh, Neptune and the North Node Vertex. So here, so this is a great placement. Um, Neptune conjunct the North Node. So this is saying that um, you know you're really really here to progress spiritually in this lifetime, um, and you're also here North Node in, in Sagittarius to really grow and to expand your horizons, your, your understanding of what the meaning of truth is, right? And your vertex is there too, which is like your doorway to higher awareness. So it's through this eighth house, which the eighth house is like, I always think of it this like envision this like, this like gates to the unknown, right? It's like, it's like this very dark, like, I don't wanna say cemetery, but just imagine this really dark place that most people are afraid to go to. Um, but for you, it's like you're meant to really confront your own darkness. It's, you're, you're really meant to confront your own individual shadow. But first, before we go to the North Node, let's start with um, you know, Neptune being placed there, right? So Neptune in the eighth house does really well because it's a water house. And uh, you, you feel really at one with others. Like it's this very like kind of like, like tapped in energy, right? And with really having the ability to transcend daily life through you know, whatever metaphysical pursuits you might have. It can also gives you the ability to, to really sense emotional undercurrents in different situations, which is obviously an amazing thing. Um, so Neptune in the eighth house, also you have to watch out for like, um, because eighth house is other people's resources. So you have to watch out for like, like when it comes to like, for example, let's say inheritances, right? Um, you, can, you have to watch out for like mischievous lawyers or people like that, right? Um, and it's opposite your moon. So it is kind of ill aspected. So you have to really be careful once again, so this is before with who you deal with, right? Because you do have this Jupiter 11th house expansive energy. So you can really welcome lots of people in. But you have to really, really be careful, right? But you're just such a strong receptor of spiritual currents. And like I said, it's a double-edged sword um, with a negative being, you know, the, the potential for deception and self, self-deception. And that's already shown with that aspect to talk about of moon opposite, opposite Neptune. Also, there's loans and debts are responsible, you know, for this, for the eighth house, or it's responsible for loans and debts. So what, don't take on debt. Just don't, just don't, don't, don't. Or like, just be very, very careful about like being swindled, like really, really, like if you're gonna do any kind of contract, like read it over and really, you know, be careful with that. Um, but overall, it's a really strong place and it gives a really strong talent in the occult. The gates of consciousness are wide open to the unknown, right? Um, and you're like almost like a sponge where you just receive all this information. So another issue that can appear is like, Watch, watch out for like believing in every strange theory that you might read. That's something that can happen with this energy. Um, Cause it can, it can make you an easy, easy subject for being like, for like manipulators and someone who, and of course the Virgo Mars part of you is going to save a lot of that. Cause it's going to make you really like, like look and notice and kind of see that stuff, but you still have to watch out for that. Um, and yeah, just like I already talked about getting like, like watching out for like energy vampires. Um, in sex, you know, it's it's gonna it's gonna require lots of tenderness, um, and 
kind of like this unification through sex, this very like ecstatic, um, you know, magical sex. And um, yeah, another interesting part is that sometimes a person will take pleasure in being used. Um, it can be a very submissive, like, like sexually. I don't want to go too much into that, but um, like there could be some like masochistic, like kind of, you know, energy there. If I said that word correctly. Um, also, but there can be like periods of like celibacy, um, like, like, like going between like asexuality and, and high sexuality, which is interesting. So, yeah. And also eighth house rules, rules death. So, um, it can, it can surround the death with like a lot of mystery, <laughs> not to say you're going to like have like like anything like like a like a a murder or some some crazy thing like that but it, it can it can um yeah there can be some some kind of fog some kind of like uh, like like a unknown quality to like to it um you have to really watch out for choking also on liquid or drowning um i don't know like i've had clients before who i've told this to and they're like oh my god like when i was a kid i nearly drowned in like a pool like it was this big thing um also through poisoning like so really watch out with substances um because you can like poison yourself like through those um and also by mistake so like yeah like alcohol drugs like i said it falls into that substance abuse and also it's like a very like the eighth house is a house of secrets so um you know it's it's like it's like you'll there can be some confusion like there can be some confusion around around secrets when it comes to when it comes to debt to the death um like there can be yeah like like uh it can almost be like some secret element to 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 that but i don't want to talk too much about 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 death um and, you know everything with with reincarnation which i'll go into next to next um so yeah the gates to everything are open it's all about having boundaries which you know you know virgo is very good at or tend to be very good at. So, yeah. Um, so then, you know, ninth house um, or eighth house being ruled by Sagittarius. Um, you know, you like to... So, okay, let's let's talk about the North Node. So North Node is like, yeah, it's like that I talk about so much. If, you, you know, you, you see my Instagram or, if, you know, you know that I talk so much about the North Node because it's like, it's like really the destiny point. So another thing about relationships is that North Node is so important relationships, right? Like you, if two people are going, in, it's like where you're like really going, the direction you're going. So if people are going in two, like, I don't really like to want to talk about my relationships. So let's just say I've dated someone before where my North Node is Aquarius, their North Node is Cancer. And those are such different energies that was very obvious that like our destiny is like where we were really meant to go long-term for our real, our real spiritual like soul growth. Um, we're so different, right? So um, Sagittarius North Node, it's a quest for like truth, for like finding out who you are, what meaning of life is, like 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 purpose. So traveling is super important, whether it's traveling physically or traveling metaphorically. Um, so yeah, it's like it's like all about like developing a sense of direction and higher vision. So North Node in the eighth house, it's about um, you know, let, learning to let go, right? Um, learning to let go of the comfortable. I talked about this before, right? So there's no surprise you have tons of earth in your chart, right? With your south node, you know, um, in the second house and you being, you know, Taurus with tons of Capricorn or tons of Virgo, um, you know, there can be somewhat of like a, like when we talk about like the internal and the external world or the internal, like the spiritual and like the, the physical world, maybe in past life, there's too much focus on the physical, right so it's like about going towards that emotional what are the undercurrents what's my shadow you know how can i get to the bottom of it and that's aided by your travels like i said your travels to different countries and different cultures and then your travels metaphorically through different philosophies those are really going to help you um in astrology and in, in psychology and anything esoteric whatever it is that tickles your fancy that is what's important for you to go towards um so 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 really like um, yeah, letting go of past life attitudes, uh, past life ingrained attitudes, 
that may like maybe stuck, right? With Jupiter retrograde, also I tend to think of that as like um, belief system, like kind of some some of that same energy with belief systems, where you're really here to kind of like rethink your 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 belief system, what you really truly believe in as higher higher truth. So it's no that's another kind of synchronicity in your chart. Um, so yeah, it's really about North Node Eighth House is like 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 just like risk taking on a physical because it's Sagittarius and spiritual and emotional level. And that is so important. I can't say that enough. That is so, so important. So ninth house, nothing in it. Uh, it's ruled by Capricorn. So, um, you know, you, you might have like a serious kind of approach to um, travels and to, to kind of like, uh, like pursuing higher education. And you, you might be like very well organized when you, when you travel. And um, yeah, with Saturn there, you know, uh, ruling, you know, being, oh, there's my cat, Esme. Um, you know, no plants in ninth. Esme, when you want, Esme, say me out. Yeah, no, I don't want her to mess everything up. Let's just hold it. I just want to make sure she didn't mess up the camera. Okay. Um, oh, shit. Okay. So, blah, blah, blah. okay, where was I? So, okay. So, yeah, basically at this point, um, yeah, so you can have, so, so even though like traveling and, and all that is such a, it's, it's seer, and like, and like really like, like the, everything I just talked about that North Node is so important, you might have kind of, so, kind of like a, it might not be until after your 30s, I know you're, you're already over 30, that you really like branched out and were able to do that. There might be some like conflicts in the way of that. Okay, 10th house ruled by Aquarius. We talked about that already. That's a career stuff. 11th house by Pisces. You know, that's just a very beautiful energy for like friends and and groups of people. Um, and what other house? So, okay, so talk about the seventh. Um, okay, so 12th house, right? So 12th house is that very karmic, like like past life house, right? Um, and actually, before I go in there, your past life ruler is Jupiter, um, right? Or, or excuse me, no, 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 no. Um, no, no, your, 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 your north node ruler is Jupiter. So like, you're really trying to find through like so so a big a big way for you to get to your highest purpose is to take risks with the type of spiritual groups that you join um and i might actually have one for you but since this is uh yeah message me about that on instagram and i can actually tell you about something that actually um, a group that might really help you out um so Basically, yeah. So there's a huge link between like like taking risks and joining almost like not like necessarily spiritual groups or groups that that, that have that Piscean like you like oneness energy to it are really really important towards your like your your highest growth. So twelfth house is ruled by Aries. So um, and it has Chiron in it. So which one should I start with? So Aries in the twelfth house. Um, you can sometimes feel overwhelmed by other people's emotions, um, like losing your sense of self, right? I already talked about that before. And um, you can also find yourself fighting other people's battles. And you really need time alone to rejuvenate and to renew your spiritual direction, right? That's the best way I can put it. And um, the fact that, you know, you have, you know, Chiron in there and Eris, right? Um, like Eris in the 12th house would be someone who likes to really keep conflict buried, like very deeply buried rather than out in the open. Um, so that one is interesting. And you might not be like someone who deliberately ignores problems. Um but you, yeah, you just might, might not really be aware of the trouble that might surround you in different situations or the matter, matters that your loved ones are trying to communicate. So um, it can be a wonderful trait um, helping you to concentrate on different demanding pro projects, um, you know, meditate in, in prayer for long periods of time and uh, is very beneficial and, and just gen generally like contemplating the fire things in life and, and just like the meaning just like deeper meaning and, and, and all of that, that can make you very easily distracted also. Right. Um, let me 
one second. As this stop scratching. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that is there. Um, so yeah, being careful not to, yeah, to lose your own thought. And um, yeah, once again, being very watchful of those surrounding you. And um, you may also choose to work at a healing or teaching institution at some stage in your life. And sound can be very, very soothing for you. So Chiron in the 12th in Aries. What a placement. What an interesting placement. Um, and one second. I'm trying to pull something up. Hold on. So Chiron in the 12th is a placement where you might have some some you know, you, you, it can speak about like past life kind of pain, um, you know, deeply buried wounds and moments of overwhelming pain. Um, and you can, it's, it's really like in Aries, right? That's about your, your sense of, of, of being, of independence, of just going, right? That being violated in some way. And like that, that real assertiveness, Mars function kind of being like feeling like that's difficult right um so like anyone that has chiron in a fire sign they sometimes feel find, find it very hard to like self-express and to just be assertive we've talked about them before with the lack of fire so it's like really working on how you can do that um you know i do offer astrological counseling and i've actually had clients where we've spoken you know that's been a big thing is like really trying to get past the chiron it's actually just ironic because um one of my recent clients has something so so similar and yeah a lot of our work together in the astrological counseling sessions um has been about regaining that that voice reg regaining that power that fire power because lacking fire in the chart um you know th that's where the, the psychology my two master's degrees comes in but i can't you know do all of that in this session it's those are two different things. So let me know if you're ever interested in that. Um, so Chiron and Aries also, they might overcompensate by trying to be first at everything. Um, and also you have to watch out for head injuries, right? But overall, um, you know, in the 12th, there's, there, there can be this, this um, there's, the, there's the potential to experience this like cosmic immersion, right? like really, really get into mysticism. Um, so it's, it's a very like, like a natural thing for Chiron 12th house people to be very mystical healers that help, that can help other people heal in those ways too. That can help other people heal their, their physical, their, their spiritual wounds. But the fact that you have an Aries, it's like Nyx is this, it's this such a physical sign. So it's like a real mix of the two, right? So, um, you know, like, you know, the 12th house is Pisces, Neptune. So that's like, connecting us to the realms of beyond time, beyond rationalism, rationalism or beyond, you know, this, this uh, consensus reality we have, right? So it's all about finding methods. And this is so important in your chart to develop the right, like functions of the right brain, right? You know, the right brain is like intuition, imagination, dreams, symbolism. Left brain is like the more Virgo, like, like in, in, in Gemini, right? Like the more like, uh, oh, actually definitely maybe more, more Virgo than Gemini, but anyways, like more logic. So that's like, like figure out ways to um, like, for example, if we ever did, if we ever did like sessions and counseling, that's like something I would focus on would be the Chiron, um, figure out ways around that. Um, but it's very, very intuitive and it makes, you know, a very, very curious mind of like the collective unconscious trying to really understand that. And yeah, like um, you, you also might be very, um, aware of like previous incarnations and really really trying to seek that out right and um usually you know the chiron 12th house people they, they've come to this life to to fulfill a very high purpose but it's not always an easy road um because the goal is so high so more about chiron aries like what else can i add it's very, very courageous energy um you know, you're really on a quest to understand your identity and purpose um, and it, it can really create like in terms of like your identity as a healer, because that's, you know, Chiron is a wounded healer. It can really create like kind of a pioneer and a trailblazer. And, it, and this kind of goes hand in hand with that Aquarius career energy, because if you do have any career in anything that's healing um, oriented, um, you know, that can really play its, its part because, you know, uh, Aquarius is, is the trailblazer as well. 
so um yeah it's it's really like it makes them like almost impatient um they're on like when like they're on that you know with your north node and sagittarius like on that that trek for the answers the questions they seek um and yeah they really don't like limitation so yeah it's really it's really all about taking your power back like i said before in, in, in finding that fire, finding that inner fire. And that's going to help the whole rest of your chart, right? Because when, when you lack fire, as I said many times, you, you can get stagnant and, and not take risks and, and kind of like you have so much energy that can like keep you going over the like steady over the long haul. But it's like just about finding that thing that starts it, right? Because, you know, you, you, have, you have the earth, you have the air, and, you know, you also lack the water. Um, I didn't really, really see this. I mean, you do have um, Jupiter, which is a kind of like a middle planet. But it's still, it's still, it's still, you know, not, it's not, it's, it's not an inner planet. So you have no inner planets in water. Um, so that's when you lack water and walk, lack fire, water is like, but you do have lots of indicators of like intuition and compassion, but um, that's typically what, what lacking water is because water is like really that, that compassion, that being able to really feel someone else's emotions, but you do have the, you know, the Neptune place where it is. Um, and, um, but like really, really what it is, is like, it's like, it's like kind of just like getting out of the realm of logic of uh, literally what I said before about getting into that, finding ways to get into that right brain, right. And as opposed to left brain, med like meditation, journaling, um, anything artistic, like that is so huge for you and your chart. And then that ties back to everything, like your North Node, right? So, yeah. And one great, like when I see Pluto in the sixth house, like I saw in your house, in, in, in Uranus, I think service, 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 service. And the fact that you're Virgo, I imagine that that plays a role in your life. Um, also, Pluto in the sixth house, it's like daily routine is super important in your, in your, in your life. and. Um, yeah. So it's like, once again, I, I spoke about that already, right? Like really, I have to say it again, the power of, of, of uh, recognizing, recognizing the relationship between um, mind and body. So that's like why meditation is so huge for someone like you. So vertex, you know, I, I kind of already talked about, it. it's like the doorway to higher awareness and it just goes, it's right next to the North node. So once again, it's basically like, like, like astrology has this beautiful way of saying the same thing in different places, um, in different ways. And it's really just like, you know, your doorway to higher awareness is through these deep and often super intense experiences. Um, you know, the death, rebirth, transformation. So, yeah. Um, also can give like lots of interest in like the process of dying and like stuff like, like, for, like I have a similar thing where it's like, I, I used to read like tons of books about like life after death um, and like past life regression, stuff like that. So it's no, no, um, you know, maybe even astrolog you know, astrologers and also like psychologists, like it's very, very good placement for like anyone who wants to dive deep into the psyche of themselves or others. So when you're a psychologist or doing something like I do, you know, like a, um, I don't know, a psychotherapist slash astrologer, like by, you know, understanding, like, for example, when, you know, when we have our session, I'm going to learn something about your psyche. Right. And then I'm going to learn like each time I have a session with someone and then I, I get to, ha you know, have the honor to do that. I'm learning more about, you know, what, you know, human psychology is, and that's of extreme in, um, interest to you. Um, okay. So let's see. So, okay. Just let's, let's go over just like rulerships really quick. Um, so, okay. The ones we haven't gone over. So I, I said Taurus rules the first house. Um, I've already talked about that. The Taurus rising. Um, Gemini rules the second house. So that's like makes one makes one really full, you know, of money making ideas. Um, you also have to watch out for letting money slip through your hands. I already talked about that with the moon there, and um, you can actually be someone that talks quite quickly. I kind of like measure the way I do my readings based on like like what I see in the person's chart. Like, I'll talk slower if I see a certain type of chart, but with you, I know that you can process a lot. So third house, Cancer. 
Um, so that, that just like usually says that you enjoy sharing your feelings and insights um, in, in, um, in your communications with others, even like, like maybe express, like enjoy, like you might, even though it's sad in there, you might um, like to express your emotions with your family. Um, it makes you very intuitive minded and you like to speak about emotions. Fourth house, Leo, that kind of makes you like take a lot of pride in your home, your family. You can maybe even like be like the kind of like the star of your family system. Um, and yeah, liking to be the center of attention, your home environment uh, makes the sun rule the fourth house, which is in the fifth house. So that doubles down on that um, where, you know, you might have a lot of your, your life purpose, um, you know, spent at home. Um, you know, maybe you have a career where, you, where yeah, just really home energy and Virgo is a very domestic sign. So fifth house, obviously ruled by Virgo, um, gone over that Mercury, which is in this, in the sixth. Um, so yeah, I mean, what else can you say? You have three plants or you have a stellium in Virgo. So, um, you know, you find it difficult to play and tell your house is in order to enjoy like methodical games, pastimes, problem solving. So it's all about, yeah, like letting go and learning like like you'll you'll like to do like, have fun in kind of a structured way i have a similar thing i have i have a capricorn really my fifth so it's actually kind of similar and you know with it's, it's a similar sign what i've done is i've made my fun astrology it's not my only fun one of my funds my work so yeah um libra ruling the sixth i think i talked about that right um yeah just liking a very balanced and harmonious daily routine um in cooperation with the people that you work with and just, you know, health and, and good and just, yeah, just all that good, that, that, that healthy routine. <laughs> and I already talked about all your, you know, the plans you have in there. So, yeah. Um, I talked about, you know, the, the, the Scorpion, the seventh, the intensity in relationships. I talked about the Sagittarius, the eighth, um, you know, you, you, you might have like, uh, many morals when it comes to joint enterprises and sexual relationships and really try to expand yourself through them and through your um, connections with other people. You have to really watch out of being swindled and trusting the wrong people. Capricorn really ninth. I talked about that. That was a serious approach to traveling. I talked about Aquarius and talked about all of these. So I think that's pretty much it. Let me just pull something up really quick just to see. Okay. Hmm. So you have asteroid arrows conjunct your moon, and that's a very sexual, um, Astra, it's like that primordial force manifestation. So um, that can kind of maybe inform like the moon sign and maybe the sexuality even more. Um, yeah, so it's like, yeah, very fiery burning quality, um, sometimes runs out of control and can lead to scorch, scorching on many levels. On many levels, when the fires of desire go wrong, there can be a lot of suffering and damage. But it's like, yeah, arrows, erotic. <laughs> Um, so your, is it your sun mid, mid, midpoints in the third house? So where your 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 energies come together, your solar and lunar energies come together is in the house of communication, um, in the house of of thought. So you know, I, I could I could see you being like a really like a really amazing writer, and I could see that being like something that like is great for you, especially with the Virgo energy and. And, you know, with, with, with what I'm seeing there. Um, and I completely want, like, my timer stopped. So I'm probably way over, but whatever. Um, this is what I do. Um, okay. So. Venus conjunct union. I don't know much about asteroid union. I know it's a love, it's one of the love, um, or excuse me, fixed star union. 
Wait, is this an Xterra or Aster? Big star union. So, but you know, a lot of them, they, you know, it, it, it's just like once again, like it's it's like like you ha you have your moon conjunct the um, Eros and, and union conjunct the Venus. So it's just like um, you know, union playing a very like just like really really like having like that that determination to to have union. Like what else? Duh. I mean, I, I'm I, I'd have to look it up. Like I mean, I have looked up in the past. I have it somewhere on my phone. Um, it doesn't go that much deeper. So, yeah, you have that. Okay, so none, none here, none here. Okay. Okay. Nothing here, nothing there, nothing here. Okay. Nope. And nope. So I don't see any any big uh, asteroids or fixed stars. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I'll flash the reading over or the, the chart over the screen. One more time. Okay. So as you see, um, you know, we've gone over this, this whole chart. So just a few things, uh, very important, actually, no. So, okay. Just so you know, the, the fact that, that this is on YouTube is so huge because I, up until about, this is the third, my third going on YouTube. I, um, I would send them to people, right. And they would be stored in my Google drive, but eventually my Google drive would have to get cleared. I'm not trying to pay a hundred dollars a month for storing on, you know, Google drive stuff. I already pay like, I don't know, $20. So I think, or something, 10 or 20, I don't even know, 15, I forget. But basically like doing this method is way better because this video, you know, first of all, one, if you, you know, feel like YouTube is going to like delete my YouTube channel one day or YouTube is going to go away, you can easily just go and find one of those, you, like, I think there's like YouTube video downloaders, um, very easy to use. Um, so then you could, you know, you could, you could save on a USB drive or, or whatever, but two, like you have no many, no idea how many clients I've had from like three years ago, four years ago who messaged me like, Hey, Jesse, like, I was just thinking about your reading the other day. I really wanted to listen to it to kind of see, you know, whatever, because you know, readings, this last, this chart, you get done once you never need to get it done again. And it's so incredible. Once you hear it the first time to see the things kind of come true. Right. So, um, I've had so many clients where it's like so unfortunate because I'm like, like it won't open. I'm like, yeah, I told you, you know, I told, I told you to, to save it somewhere on your computer. Um, like, oh darn, you did tell me, um, but I didn't. So having it on YouTube um, means that you don't have to do that. But um, if you, yeah, if you do want to, you can uh, do, you'll find one of those, you, you like on Google, like YouTube to like, like convert YouTube video to whatever and do that. I would do that. Not that anything is going to happen to it. So second of all, um, you know, so this reading is done once it's done. We'll have our, our follow-up. We can talk about this too, but I highly suggest to do a current astrology once a year with me. Um, so this is actually a different reading. The current astrology is a live reading. So we'll just speak face to face, you know, live, like no, like no recording, just straight live. And that actually represents the chapter of now. This is the book of your life. That one is the chapter of now. And, I, and I'm always, you know, it's always a great idea to get that one done because there can be an astrological force that is just completely like making it feel um, like, for example, let's say that you're, let's just say for the sake of argument that your, your moon was in Aries at like 27 degrees or 26 degrees. Right now, because Pluto is at 27 Capricorn, you would have Pluto, transit Pluto, because they're always moving, squaring, you know, your na natal Pluto. And that would just, that's not, you don't have that. But anyone that would have that, that would just completely, completely, like, like change the filter color of their life, their experience. Like, it would just be so different. And they might even get a reading from me and they'd be like, I don't feel like that. 
like 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 they might get this reading, but because that's such an intense transit, um, they might like not understand that. So there's that and so much more. Um, so I highly suggest doing that one, but we'll we can talk about that more. And for, of course, also the astrological counseling. You know, if you really enjoyed this, I have two master's degrees in psychology. That is really what I'm trying to uh, focus on is astrological counseling. It's only available to people who have had their chart done by me. Um, and um, if you're interested, like, let me know. Um, it's, it's completely catered. And I also teach astrology too. I, I do one-on-one -on -one classes. It's the best deal in the world. Like when it comes to, to learning astrology, one-on-one -on -one exactly catered to, you know, wherever you're at. So I'm just telling you that because some people think I just do nail charts. Um, and I also, finally, I do astrocartography, which is the astrology of how different geographic locations impact you and compatibility readings, which is like basically, obviously in compatibility, which can be love a love relationship, a sibling, it can be a business partner, it can be anyone, an animal, I don't know. So yeah, anyways, my website's for that. And I look forward to talking to you. I probably went way over time, but that's what I do for my clients because I love you guys. All right, thanks so much. And I will talk to you later. All right, bye-bye.